went to the fight capital of the world and asked the fans, who's the greatest heavyweight ever? By far, it's Muhammad Ali. Ripping punches. Muhammad Ali. A challenger goes down again. Muhammad Ali. Who's the heavyweight champion of the world? Sports Illustrated presents Muhammad Ali, the video. See his pro debut, his fights with Liston, Foreman, Frazier, Spinks, and more. And the video is free with your paid subscription to SI. Get it and find out who the greatest of all time is. A short choosing right to the jaw, Liston goes down. The man, he, he jabbed, body danced. He felt like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Keep the camera moving, because I'm kind of fast. A sharp right and only goes down. It brought back memories, things I'd seen and hadn't seen. All the fights, all the interviews. Muhammad Ali, he took them all along. God's former Joe Frazier. Naming the round and all that. People thought that was a fluke. He wanted to go to heaven, so I took him himself. You don't see boxers like that anymore. And George Foreman goes down. Foreman goes down like a twist of lightning. And the Muhammad Ali video is free. That video's free? Can't be. How, how can it be free? It's free when you subscribe to Sports Illustrated. Save over 50% off the cover price. Oh, I, I go for it in a heartbeat. It's something to look into. You'll get 23 issues, including the baseball preview and the swimsuit issue for three monthly installments of only $9.89. Or you can pay by credit card, so call now. One of the greatest magazines that's been around this country since day one. Kind of like Muhammad Ali, it gives you everything. Come on, girl. We in the north. great memories of the greatest champion ever. The view the legend in the tape was fantastic. People who never had seen Ali would love this tape. Yes, I recommend for anybody. You can't walk away from this tape without being a Muhammad Ali fan. I am the king of the world! Hold it, hold it, hold it! Hold it, hold it. You're not done for it. I'm a bad man! Call our toll-free number now and get knockout savings on Sports Illustrated and get the Muhammad Ali video free. I still got the world! I still got the world! Through the regulation 60 minutes at Montreal, a 2-2 tie between the Canadians and the Bruins. Each team scored in the first period. Stephen LeBeau gave Montreal the lead on the power play. Courtnall and Savard assisted four minutes and 44 seconds into the game. Then Don Sweeney replied on a breakaway, unassisted goal at 8.06 to tie it. The second period was scoreless. And then in the third period, Boston took the lead. Lazaro firing one off the left wing, his third goal of the series. Burridge assisting at a minute and 26 seconds. Shane Corson gets Richet's rebound and ties it with his eighth of the playoffs. Ryan Scrudland drew an assist as well. You see the time, 15 minutes and 56 seconds in the third period. The shots on goal through the game. Canadians dominated in the first period. Outshot Boston again in the second, but in the third, it's the Bruins with eight shots, the Canadians with six. A lot of them coming in the late stages, and 32 to 22 favor Montreal, the shots on goal. This is the goal that sends us to overtime. Corson will get it from Richet and Scrudland. Corson's on the left side of the ice, and he'll just simply drive to the net. Scrudland stayed wide, uh, drew a couple of players to him, and then set up the rocket from Richet, but it was blocked. Remember we said Corson was going to the net? He found the loose puck, put it in behind Andy Moog with 4.04 remaining in the third period to tie it up. And that goal, the result of one of the few times that the Bruins didn't choke off the center ice area in that period. And Jig's one of the few times that Corson, Scrudland, Richet line, which has been dominant at times in this series. That's one of the few times they were able to get things going all the way up ice. And you were right, Boston had tried to choke off the neutral zone. Scrooland stayed wide. He's a bright player, took a great pass from Desjardins, was able to move up ice, and they got the job done. And the one other area that we've talked about in this series, and especially here tonight, going to the third period, the face-offs, key face-offs, and I think there was only one in the offensive zone that Montreal won cleanly. Yeah, uh, Montreal has had a lot of face-offs in the Boston zone, and Boston is a team that is certainly bright enough to realize they're not great at winning the draws clean. So what they do is they work on their draws on what to do if you lose the draw or at least try and get the neutralized centerman job done. In other words, if the puck's dropped, don't let him beat you clean. At least tie him up and then allow the wingers to come in, get the puck, and if they don't get the puck, Jigs, what it does is it buys time for the wingers to move out to the defensemen so they don't get those clean shots. This is only the second round. The divisional finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs. This will be playoff game number 14 to go to overtime. We've got a look at all the game winners. 13 games decided in OT. Neil Pratt. The Bobby Smith and back to Pratt. Over to Tenor. To the net. He scores! Brian Pratt has won the game for the Minnesota North Stars in overtime on the power play for three stars. Medina got it into the middle of the board. Bork over to Jaeger. Jaeger. McLean on him. Jaeger muscled it in. Jaeger shot. They win! Yeah, Jaeger. Blake and 
Lumay's up with it inside the Los Angeles blue line. Up to Sandstrom. As Lumay backing in, shoots one, blocked the rebound, turned aside, another shot, they score! Puts McTavish to the line, but he couldn't hold the pass. Now steals it from McSorley. McTavish feathered one to Tegan and centered it. Tip the score. The Oilers have won. Peter Klima. Lamb. Lamb gets it to Tegan and Tegan and shot. One more dramatic goal to that parade tonight. He's died hard in the first four games. Minnesota led the majority of the time, but last night Vincent Riendo kept the Stars scoreless until the last six minutes of the game. The Blues scored early and they never looked back. Well, to, what are the coaches' feelings when you go into the overtime? Well, I guess in a game like this, CJ, where each team has had the lead and seen it disappear, it's uh, it's like. Somebody said the other night, it's uh, playing on the pond and your mother calls, so dinner's on the <laughs> table, uh, next goal wins, right? Uh, how do you approach it? I know this much, Jigs. The coaches will be telling their players, if you don't have any great play to make, just put the puck towards the goal. We saw the one big goal by Dino Cicerelli against the Rangers. He just put the puck on the net from a bad angle and found its way past Mike Richter. And if you're on the other side of the ice, which we call a weak side winger, the side of the ice where the puck is not, drive to the net, get there, because you never know, there could be a rebound, strange things happen in overtime. Yeah, we've seen uh, the rebound goal that Wayne Gretzky scored in that series against Vancouver. Then you'll see a, a situation that we've talked about tonight, right from the draw. These two coaches here, I have a feeling are going to be a little conservative, though, in their approach. Well, I, I'm not so sure. I, I think Pat Burns thinks that way, maybe a little more than Mike Milbury. Mike Milbury is the type of guy that says, hey, we're here, we're in good position, we can end the series, let's go out and win it. And Pat Burns, I think he'll be careful with what players Boston puts on the ice and just try not to give up a bad goal or at least get caught with a bad matchup because he's the home team coach. Well, every night prior to a playoff game, we sit the two coaches down and we get their feelings on different things that may occur in the game, but there's always that thought about overtime. Well, overtime is one thing that we go into, and uh, I usually say the same things. I always tell the guys to uh, to make the plays at the net. You never know what could hit something in uh, somebody's stick or somebody's leg, and always be where the puck is going, not where it's been. Get the first one. <laughs> That's all we want is the first one. We have to score a goal. You can't sit there and play uh, completely defensive-minded hockey. You've got to look for an opportunity to, to create a scoring chance. You have to create a turnover, uh, and then uh, with a little bit of luck, you know, you'll come out a winner. We talked during the third period, J.D., about the line changes, the matchups that uh, we'd seen moved around by the Boston uh, coaching staff. Do they come right back with their set lines, do you think? It's an interesting uh, thought. Now that the game is tied, there may be a different strategy involved. Will they want Nyland back on the left side with Neely and Janney? I don't know. Squeako's a pretty good left winger, 
And the other thing you have to remember, Jiggs, generally uh, penalties aren't called and teams don't go out of their way to try and molest another player and take a penalty. So I think the smartness of what you can put on a line, at least a couple of, I, I, one defensive player per line is certainly the best way to look at it. We'll see a lot of Ray Bork, I'm sure, to start the overtime and double shift. Every second shift, he'll be out there. For Montreal, they don't get a lot of offense from the backside, but Schneider has tried to provide that now and again throughout the series. And I would think up front that we'll, we'll probably see a little bit more of Savard. Now, you pointed out the, the concern that the Canadians have on his defensive abilities. But I think in a game like this, he's a guy who just might step into the breach. And uh, Pat Burns may give, him a, may give him a little more ice time than what he has uh, been accustomed to. Well, if he's out there, at least they'll have Keane, I would think, on the wing with Savard. Or if not, they'll at least have a defensive winger, one defensive winger on the ice with him. And the referee's attitude in overtime is no doubt keep the players on the ice. And you see a little more let go in this situation he doesn't want to be the man responsible for giving out a penalty to end the season for one team and you wonder what Chris Nyland will say prior to the overtime and he talks to Andy Moe uh, that'll be the same thing Jigs concentration stay focused and old knuckles will try to get you going Andy Moe gets a great attitude as does a number of the players on both teams Andy Moog does television interviews prior to games, even though it's, it's an important playoff game like this one. This is the 100th time in the history of the Montreal Canadiens that they've gone to overtime in a Stanley Cup playoff game. 53 times they've won, 44 they have lost. Now, I realize that doesn't add up to 99, because in the old days, back when J.D. was no prior to your career, there were ties in Stanley Cup playoffs. For the Bruins, their 82nd trip to overtime, 31 wins, 47 losses, and three times they saw the game end in a draw. Now the Bruins do put Chris Nyland on the ice back at, at left wing with Janney and Neely. Some overtime numbers, lifetime between the black clad Boston Bruins and the Canadians. In their home uniforms, the Blue Blanc Rouge, Cote, Schneider will be together for Montreal in defense. Up front, Carbonell with McPhee and Kortkov. Boston, as J.D. pointed out, Janney, Neely, and Nyland. Wesley and Bork on defense. Janney wins the draw from Carbonell, and Bork puts it right on target. Schneider back in the exchange now with Waugh. Matthew Schneider. Carbonell moving out on the right, McPhee on the left, Schneider elects to carry the puck and then shoot it from outside the line. Stick save by Moe, pulls it back in and covers it. Why not? There's McPhee, there's Carbonell, both looking for a loose puck. And the velocity of that shot by Schneider, even though it was from the blue line, got away a little bit from Andy Moe, the puck did, so he had to hang on. And as you see, he's clearing away the snow that was shoved his way by the stopping Montreal forward. No changes yet. Yes, Montreal makes a change. They change of defense already. Take off Cote along with Schneider and put on J.J. Daniel and Desjardins. And for Boston, they're going to make a change yes. with Poulin coming out to take the face off. Poulin and Carbonell, they're in the circle to the right of Andy Moe. Get the draw back to Daniel over to Desjardins. Long shot. What a stop by Moe with the blocking glove. Sharp angle shot is deflected back of the net. Carbono trying to center. Went to Bork. Can't slip it through Cortnall skates. But now Neely drops it back into Bork. Out of the zone with the feed to Nyland. Up the boards and Desjardins drops back. Nyland counting him as the puck went to Cortnall. Knocked out of the air by McPhee. Canadians couldn't regain control. Neely poking at it in front of the Boston bench. They pull him, lost it in Cortall skates. They went toward Wesley, couldn't pick it up. Loose now for Neely, dragged it away from McPhee. Three Canadians back, a long shot, turned aside by Waugh. Canadians tied it through center ice, going back here is Wesley. You get the feeling that the both coaches told their players to put the puck on goal no matter where you are? I think so. Christian did, it was knocked away there by Waugh. And Desjardins works it out of the zone. Don Sweeney, the pass was behind. Streco up with it as Corson dropped it, and Strudlin couldn't get to it. Dave Christian with Janney. They're over the line. Janney tight on the right wing board. 
Can't get around Cote. The puck loose. From back of the net. Christian put it in the goal mouth. That's cleared up by Schneider. A break here for Kortdahl. Back comes Sweeney. Kortdahl pulls up. Shoots. Moves the save. The puck handled by Galley on the rebound. And he's cleared it up to Janney. Cote drops back. Coming late is Christian as Janney pulls up now. Looks towards Grieco. Looks towards the point man. Don Sweeney up the slot and slammed into Scrudland. Ray Bork out in the center ice area. Both teams appearing as if they want to end it early. Janney up now to Christian. Big drive is wide of one. That will bounce out into center ice. Montreal had too many men on the ice jigs. They had three defensemen for a long period of time. And they're a very lucky, very lucky hockey club. They weren't called for it. I'll say. Bork at the line. Can't hold it in. Here's Savard. Gilchrist up with him. Savard off right wing. He shoots. Moog the save. And he sits down on top of the puck. Oh, boy. Andy Moog got caught back a little bit. Savard stayed wide. He elected not to move the puck ahead to Gilchrist. Savard stayed wide and took the shot. Very nearly fooling Andy Moog. In two minutes and 20 seconds of overtime, each team has had three shots on goal. And you haven't seen a party play yet. You're seeing both teams go in overdrive and are taking shots from every different angle. Every different angle. This is Desjardins off a win of a face off. The shot is on goal, and what a save by Moog through traffic. That was a Carbonell beating Poulin on a face off. Now here you see Courtney. Watch him stop. Boom. High shot into the chest of Andy Moore. Courtney loves to shoot the puck high and does about 90% of the time. Watch this shot. Look where Andy Moog is this time. Very seldom have we seen him that deep. I think he was thinking pass. Savard elected to shoot. And we have another face off in the Boston zone. The same two centermen. And Carbono won the last one, Jakes. And again, Montreal has that 1 2 2 setup. He turns the hand on the stick, got it to McPhee for a rip, and again Moog was there. It's important for Moog to keep the puck alive in his own zone. His team can't win face-offs. Dave Poulin with a backhander. Locking glove save, turned in by Waugh. The Canadians had Portnaw moving through center, but couldn't get the puck to him. Poulin crowding Dufresne as it's played around the boards in the Canadian zone. Burridge is bumped by McPhee. Neely reached for it and missed. Guy Carbonell comes outside the line. Over center ice. Neely right on him, forcing him to dump it in. Moog has given it to Bork now round the boards. Burridge had pulled up. Got away from him, went the length of the ice. Cote has yet to touch it. Now he does. <laughs> Delayed reaction there. He played three minutes and two seconds of overtime. Hasn't it been fun? I don't know if it's been fun for the coaches. It certainly has for people watching this one nothing like overtime and what could be the deciding game in the series Boston leads three games to two if they win they'll go home and get ready to face the Pittsburgh Penguins on Wednesday night if they lose they'll come down to the seventh game of the series at the Boston Garden on Monday once again Boston goes with Davey Poulin this time it's not Carbono it's Savard that he has to face for the draw Poulin checking with his line mates. Everybody to the left of Dave Poulin. The Canadians line up similarly. Everybody to the right of Savard. Linesman Gerard Gauthier ready to drop the puck. It's Poulin squared. Visiting player, remember, must put the stick in first. Does. Canadians get the draw. Schneider with a shot. That's blocked. And out comes Burry. Three Bruins move up. Two Canadians back. Burridge over the line, drop pass, and that shot is wide off Poulin's stick. Bounces back toward Galley, missed it, here's Keane, Don Sweeney backing in. Keane waits, waits, Savard picks up the puck. Wooden center it to Keane, comes out of the corner, shifty moves, and then his centering pass was picked off, and out come the Bruins. This is Chris Nyland into the middle to Poulin, he was checked, Nyland gets it again, puts it on Burridge's stick. Randy Burridge trying to move around Cote. It's chased to the corner. Cote right on him. And now Savard goes to clear the puck. Burridge is down. The puck oh. is beneath him. He took a hard lick from Cote. Oh, he was nailed. And I mean nailed heavily into the boards, but appears to be okay. I think Boston just had to play in their own zone jigs. They were very, very lucky. Here's the pushing check from Cote using the leg drive to drive Burridge into the boards. And he seems to be okay. 
Montreal like to crisscross when they move up ice. When you're a defending team, when they crisscross, it's tough to stay with your men. And Savard had two Bruins chase him, leaving Keane wide open in front, but Savard couldn't get the puck back to him. And the people here in the Montreal Forum have enjoyed the overtime to this point. 17,995, and a guy who used to wear the Canadian uniform, Chris Nyland, has excited them a couple of times tonight. His ice time has more than doubled since the early portion of the series per game, but now he sits. They move Janney to left wing and put Hodge on the ice at center ice. Hodge hasn't played much. He's fresh, so here you have Mike Milbury going with a hunch. Bruins putting the puck in the Canadians' end. In after it is Hodge, out of the corner, turns on Carbono, but lost the puck to Gee. Guy Carbono turning on Neely. Makes the feed here to Desjardins. It slipped off his stick. Hodge holds it at the Montreal line. Then Janney gets checked and up with it is Portnall. Three Bruins back. Portnall over the line. Checked by Bork. McPhee chases a loose puck. Met there by Wesley. And now Janney comes up the right wing board. And Janney, the native of Hartford, is over the Montreal line, pulls up, looks toward Hodge. Neely goes to the front of the net. The pass is cut off by Daniel. Turns it over. Bork from the blue line. Played it off McPhee and up into the seat. And Bork wasn't very happy with that play, Jiggs. He had a little time. He just wanted to put the puck towards the goaltender. It was deflected. He got upset, went right to the bench, and claimed it on a stick. Time for a new stick after that play. Oh, he's played well on this one. Ray Bork, who combines great defensive abilities, as we know, along with offensive abilities. He's been good defensively in this game. Very, very good. In particular, in the second half of this game. From the Montreal side of things, Guy Carboneau. Been excellent on the faceoffs again. You think of the hit he took from Neely. Went to the bench, got some repairs. Here's a note on the playoffs. Last time, 1943, Harvey, Busher, Jackson. Wow. <laughs> That's right. He's a friend of yours, wasn't he? Later in life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> there you are. Poulin yeah. trying to move the puck in for the Boston Bruins. Out of the streak, though. Trying to move away from Cote. Over to cover this side of the ice is Schneider. Don Sweeney turns it over. Strudlin can't get out of the zone. Juris after it. Peter Juris and Strudlin waltz around. And Corson comes up for the loose puck. Up ahead to Richet. Coming back is Don Sweeney. Richet trying to move in, but back of the play, a whistle. The play called just over five minutes into overtime. The overtime winner in game two was put in by Stefan Richet. He was standing in beside, behind the goal line when he scored the goal. Pat Burns can't believe that that was a two-line pass. Jake's the last shift. Boston had Hodge on the ice. He's fresh. He hasn't played much. This last shift now, the Bruins had Duras on the ice. He hadn't played much. So Boston is trying to not only get fresh legs in there now and again, they're trying to rest people. Now you look on the ice. Pat Burns sees Rajichka on the left side. So the Las Vegas line on the ice here for Boston. The Bruins, three shifts in a row, have put a fresh body up front to try and get something going. And with the Las Vegas line on the ice, who it was offside, as you see Richet well over center ice to collect the puck. The Las Vegas line, here we go. They're up against McPhee, Carbono, and Cortnall. Cortnall with a pass a clip through to Jardin, but Carbono. Works it to the Boston zone, and here's Ray Bort. They missed Neely with the pass. They ruled it went off Neely skate, so the play is allowed to continue. And Jardin with Neely poking at it, almost knocked it away. But McPhee has it now. Strong game from Mike McPhee tonight. He dumps one in from the blue line. Moog holds it back of the net. We'll let Wesley handle it. He shot it right at Carbono, and it bounces to Cortnall. Out to McPhee. McPhee at a sharp angle. Elected not to shoot it. Gave it to Cortnall instead. Trying to swing one in front of the net that's broken up, and here's Janney over center ice. Ruzichka with him. Janney pulling to the left. The pass to Neely. Shoots that missed the dark. Comes back toward Galley. Galley to Ruzichka. Holds it at the line. Dumped it in off the boards, and Kortnall clears it out. Galley waits for his teammates to get back on side. And Janney lifts it up in the air. Bouncing one wide. Dufresne after it. And Dufresne picked up by Burridge is out now. 
And outside the line, Don Sweeney shot it off the referee, got it right back from Christian, who dumped it in. There's Dufresne for Montreal. Burridge crowds him, taking him to the board. The puck tied up in some skates, and the play call. Not many face-offs in the Montreal zone. We'll see one here. Donald Dufresne and Eric Desardin have been paired up on the Montreal Blue Line, and these two young players have had a very, very strong series. Peter Svoboda has been out with an injury, has yet to skate. Montreal has gone with four defensemen, sometimes five, very seldom six. Woo. The defenseman with a hockey smile, huh? A couple of the Ivories missing up front. Burridge <laughs> and Scrutland, false start. Linesman Sweet knocks. Now Scrutland to leave the faceoff circle. Keane just told Patrick Waugh what he's going to try to do on the faceoff. He doesn't normally take draws. Charles to the left, Christian to the right for the Bruins. Like to have Neely out there, but he's getting a rest. Watches as Burridge wins the draw. They get the puck back. Galley from the point, right on with the shot. No problem for Wong. Interesting. Montreal was caught with only one centerman out for the draw. Scrooglin was thrown out. And he should concentrate so that he's not. He's now talking to Sweet Knox about why he was thrown out. He was thrown out. Keene was forced to take the draw. Jigs and lost it. And because of that, and because of that, the shot was taken. Now we see Montreal put two centermen on the ice, which is the smarter play. In case Scrooglin's out, LeBeau's there as Turgeon goes off. It's lost cleanly. Here's the shot. All Patrick Wise has to do is hang on, not allow the rebound. But Montreal should have two defensemen on Jakes for every defensive draw. They have them here. Pardon Lebeau. me, two centermen. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. LeBeau banks one off the board. Scrudlin has checked at the line. Matthew Schneider with a pass to LeBeau down the left side. LeBeau, a right-handed shot, tries to come in with a backhander. Keen the rebound, and that went wide of the net. Now Strudlin trying to center. Look at the crowd of Bruins around him. Keen held the puck, gave it to LeBeau. Back of the net is Strudlin. Keen out in front. The pass was there, and he couldn't get a stick on it. This is Jeff Lazaro for the Bruins. Crisscrossing with Christian. Lazaro pulls the left wing and shot it wide of Wah. They come back along the boards. Bork elected not to go in after it, and the Canadians have cleared it out. LeBeau racing up, but over goes Wesley. And Bork slaps that through center right. Ote with a quick pass. Keen is into the zone. Fence of hard. Backhander. Good save by Bo. Oh, boy. Montreal trying to test the Boston defense in the neutral zone. They've gotten by them a number of times. But Andy Moog is there again. A couple of real good saves during this last minute or so. Savard wants the puck. He bangs on the ice and he takes the backhand shot. It was accurate. And Andy Moog plucked it out of the air. Another defensive zone draw coming up. For Boston and Andy Moe. The Bruins have not won one here in overtime in their own zone. Jake's in Boston defense standing up a lot in the neutral zone around center ice. And Montreal's forwards with that speed trying to go wide. And they've been close a number of times to breakaways. I'm kind of surprised the way the Bruin defense has approached this overtime. I don't think they want to back up allowing Montreal to get even more speed so they're standing up hoping that the plays don't click but boy have they been close mm. I'll say and again it's student body to the right for Montreal and to the left for Boston so hard and pulling on the face off Pullen has had his stick down, waits. Savard drops his. Pullen knocked the puck toward the corner. Bork brings it around the boards. This is Grieco. Moving out with him is Chris Nyland. Grieco pulled up at the line and put the play offside as Nyland stepped over the line ahead. Well, six times this game, Grieco's tried the wrist shot using the defenseman as a screen, even if it's a long shot. I don't think I've seen him take a slap shot in the series. It's all been wrist shots from Petri Grieco, who's... Showing his stuff, I think, is a pretty strong defensive forward in this series, along with adding some offense, especially on the power play. Another change now, and the fresh Cortnell steps onto the ice. And it is one scary thought if you're a Bruin defenseman when you see Cortnell coming at you with full speed. Boston countering with Neely, Janney, and Hoover. It's Hoover's responsibility to take care of Cortnell. Janney beats Carboneau on the draw, and Wesley drops the puck for Ray Bork. 
Around the boards with that attempt. Janney waits for it here on the left side. Works it in deeper toward Hoover. On Hoover. It's tied up. And Jardin continue to battle. Janney is there. Oh, is Carboneau. The Canadians control the puck. Jardin able to get it to Mike McPhee. He's checked at the line. The puck stayed in. No, they rule it came back in on an offside. Well, Janney handled it. One thing, Jigs, you see for the face-offs in overtime here, especially the defensive zone draws, the linesman, Gauthier or Knox, have really made sure that the thing has dropped, the puck has dropped fairly. They've been meticulous with setting up both centermen so that one does not have an unfair advantage. And credit the veteran linesman for it. Here it's Janney and Carboneau. Janney pulled it into the Montreal zone. And Carboneau right on him as he put it back in the net. Patrick Waugh around the boards to J.J. Daniel. And there is Hoover. Janney with him, but McPhee gets to a loose puck and clears it out. Up quickly is Portnall. Wesley trying to cut him off. Portnall gets bumped. Here comes Hoover down the left side. Neely joining him. Hoover a drive. Glove saved by Waugh. Oh, boy. That was a defense for Montreal making a change, Jigs. And Portnall did not get the puck deep in the Boston zone. And with Cordo not getting the puck deep, Montreal were very nearly caught. The defenseman, Desjardins, went to the bench. Here's the shot. It's deflected, and there's Patrick Y. Puck was behind him, it looked like. Here we see the puck flipped up here, and Cordo is going deep. Now, you see him stop here, Jakes. He's stopping, he's stopping, and he'll be surrounded by all these Bruin players. And he does not get the puck deep. And when he doesn't get it deep, he'll be hit right here. Montreal is making a change right now with their defenseman. If that puck is deep, there's no problem. Now the defense have to switch, and Hoover's allowed to step into the shot. And it was a good one. Hoover's a great golfer, and you can see pretty good technique when he took the stick back and followed through and hit the net. Patrick Waugh, a good goaltender. Is there a goaltender in the league with a bigger catching glove than Patrick Waugh? It's a real good question. You know that? I don't think there is. Looks like a bushel basket when he has it wide open. Of course, there is a regulation. There's a rule as to the size of the catching glove, but Patrick just seems to be that much bigger. They tend to grow <laughs> after they've been measured by the officiating crew, the goaltending equipment. Riche bumped. It's over the line. Was met by Bork in a solid check, but here's Brian Strudlin rounding the net. Strudlin holds the puck, holds it, now makes the play. Schneider at the blue line, shoots. Equal save at this end by Moog. Equal to what Patrick Waugh showed us at the other end. Some body work now, more scuffling. Doris and Corson, and I don't think Doris would mind if both of them went to the box. It would be a pretty good trade-off for the Bruins. Wesley fell on the puck and when he fell on the puck Andy Moog crawled out of the goal net to try and capture the puck himself just in case the referee decided to hand out a penalty for delay of game to the defenseman. The goaltender wants to get to that puck, snare it from the man on top of it to make it a legal play. Seven saves by Moog in overtime. Rudland who set this up, Jigs, and it's a solid point shot. You see the room through traffic and Moog out of the air, got the puck, and there's Wesley on top of it. Now watch Moog. See him crawling behind to grab it. Lots of room. Look at the Bruins all caught on one side of the ice. Three of them chasing Scrudland. Man's open. The best shot. But look at Doris take his man and Bork take his man. Great play in front by those two players, not allowing them to get to the rebound. Hodge tying up Carbono on the ensuing faceoff. And the outlet by Raymond Bork finds Neely moving down right wing around Schneider. He shoots over the crossbar. Man, that was close. Hodge, Rozicka, and Neely up front. Puck held by Galley. Laid offside. The Canadians with a chance to move it out and do, but it's off McPhee stick at the Boston line. Turned up ice by Wesley to Neely. Played it behind Rozicka. Here comes Portnall. Big shot is wide of Bowl. Carbonell with the rebound. Couldn't get it in front. It hit Galley. Let us do Hodge. Golfed it through center. Three Canadians back. Just turned it over. Neely through center ice. Bumped at the Montreal line. Rzicka finds Hodge. Neely slow to get to his skates. He is one tired hockey player. A scuffle here. And Hodge has the puck safely frozen on the boards. Hey, what happened during his last shift? Is Boston found a centerman that can win a draw in their own zone. Hodge, Hodge won the draw. Boston got control and headed up ice. And that man Neely nearly ended it. 
He knew before he got the puck he was going to get a scoring chance, Jiggs, as the puck was passed off the boards behind him. He then got to it, got away from Schneider, and went up top. Oh, boy. Inches away from heading to the conference final with Bob Johnson's Pittsburgh Penguins. Here's where he gets hit. Ooh, a hip check and a good one. Knocking Neely down. That's the first time I think we've seen him knocked down in this game, and he's been hit a lot. Now, he's had a bad leg, Jiggs, going into this series and maybe tightening up on him right now. Remember, he took some time off between games to rest a leg that gets tired because of the amount of play that he puts forth every night. Saw the trainer checking with him. He's convinced him that he's okay. On the Boston bench, Rico, Nyland, and Pullen, the forward line for the Boston Bruins. For Montreal, Riche is out there along with Corson and Scrudlin. That's Dufresne putting the puck deep in the Boston zone where Moe leaves it for Don Sweeney. Down to the right side for Nyland. Corson crowding him. Nyland makes the pass to Pullen. Galley nudged it outside the line to Strico. He's across the line on right wing. Galley drove to the net and back off as Wah made the glove save and holds the puck. And just now, Corson and Nylon are coming out of the Boston end of the ice. Montreal had three players trapped in the Boston zone, but the Boston play was a four-on-two and a very slow developing play. And they ended up with a shot from a bad angle. Pace starting to slow now a little bit, even though it's still fun to watch. You see here, it was a four-on-two. It ends up almost a two-on-three and a bad angle shot that Wad just toyed with. Going to put a bad angle shot, Jake, on Patrick Wah. Put it down on the ice so there's at least a chance of a rebound. If it's in the midsection, Patrick Wah will hang on to it. He is well up on top of the goal crease here for this draw, won by the Bruins. Harry Galley pulling to the left, shot one wide. <laughs> what a battle we had after the draw was won. Four players down on the ice in front of Wah. Here come the Canadians. Trudlin with a pass to Riche. Going to the right side. Riche checked by Dave Poulin, regains control of it, then is met by Scrico. Now Don Sweeney and Scrudlin collide on the end boards, and Chris Nyland picks up a loose puck. Pass is tipped, Poulin gets to it again at center ice, feeds Don Sweeney. Sweeney, big shot off left wing, hits behind Juan, and cleared by the Canadians. The Montreal goal is off. Juan pinned by Poulin, who was hit by J.J. Daniel. Patrick Juan looked behind him. Don Sweeney stepped into a shot, got everything behind it, challenged Patrick Waugh down low, and that was one fine save by the fine Montreal goaltender, Jiggs. That's one of many tonight, J.D. 39 shots for the Canadians, 28 for the Bruins. We're seeing the players go wide. There's Sweeney joining the rush. Watch Patrick Waugh look behind. Whoa, where is it? And there's Daniel driving Poulin into the goaltender. Poulin was driving to the net. Great action, great efforts by both teams. Look at Sweeney. He's looking, he's staying wide, so he has time to wind up. There's a good angle. Look at Waz positioning. That puck was in behind his leg, and he knocked it down with his arm. And there it's sitting there. Man. Watch Waz. He knocked that down with his catching glove, Jakes. And you're right. Looks like the size of Rhode Island, doesn't it, when he spreads it out? Yeah. We've played 10 minutes and 35 seconds of sudden death overtime. This the longest game in this series. Chris Nyland with a mini shower. And the face off in the Montreal end of the ice. Buck goes to the corner. Drew Lazaro to the line, held in by Bork. Oh, and he bounced it just wide of Patrick Waugh. Courage to Lazaro. Gets away from Carmino. Looks to the man coming in. That's Ray Bork. Bork gets to it again. Bork at the blue line. Fires one in front. Loose puck. Burridge can't get it on the stick. And out comes Guy Carmino. Carmino with a feed to the left side. Gilchrist is checked by Ray Bork. Up come the Bruins. Bork cross ice to Dave Christian. Steps over the line. Christian unloads. And that was blocked by Cote. Okay, carries it to center. Carbono with him. Up comes Gilchrist. The pass off his skates. Brought over the line. Offside. Now Ray Bork is a special player. He was on the back end of a three-on-two. Casually moved across. Didn't allow Montreal to get close to setting up an offensive shot. Earlier in the overtime, Boston carried, uh, pardon me, Montreal carried the play as we moved along, Jigs. Boston seems to be getting the last three or four good scoring chances. 
as changes are made once again. Mike Milbury just tried to get Lazaro and Duras on the ice. Taharski said no. Look at this shot with people in front. A loose puck, it's a three on three. The puck is moved out of the zone and Ray Bork woke up a three on two. Nothing quite like overtime in the Stanley Cup playoff. Well, Boston would argue that, thinking back to the opening game of the Stanley Cup final last year against the Edmonton Oilers when Peter Klima scored 55 minutes and 13 seconds into sudden death overtime. Not the longest in Cup history. It was 116 minutes and 30 seconds. 1936, the shortest, nine seconds. They were a long way from either record. <laughs> who has the NHL record in playoffs for the quickest overtime goal is in this game tonight. Brian Scrudland of the Montreal Canadiens. A goal against the Calgary Flames in the Stanley Cup final of 1986. Assisted by Mike McPhee. Not long after the puck was dropped at center ice, Jake, so that just stopped the hopes of the Flames at that time. It was only game, game two. two. Yeah, only, the, I think, second game, wasn't it, John? I believe so, yes. They took the, the steam out of the, the flames. And then it was different in the spring of 89. Neely back. The leg appears to be fine. Take the draw. He's been good on faceoffs in this series. And he tested here by Brian Scrudland. Scrudland beats Neely on the faceoff. And the Canadians to Jardin. Giving it to Corkdahl, the outlet to McPhee, trying to go around Galley, but Don Sweeney lost it. McPhee couldn't pick it up again, and here's Galley. His pass off the skates of Hodge. He butted it out of the air, has it on the stick. It's over the line, a rolling puck to contend with. Feeds it back to Galley. Centers one in front off to Jardin. There's McPhee working it to Corkdahl. Over the line on right wing, trying to drive wide on Don Sweeney. Center, McPhee couldn't get a stick on it. Pam Neely and, Chris, and Janney crisscross. Greg Janney leaves it for Neely. Cam Neely shot on Waugh, knocked away. Janney can't get it out in front again as Waugh was backed in under the crossbar. Jigs, Don Sweeney must have great conditioning because he, uh, as one defenseman, has jumped into the play a lot of times here in overtime. Now we watch Raymond Bork move it in deep. Rozicka centers, can't get it to Burridge. Good play, but a fine defensive move by Schneider to break it up. McPhee has worked it on into the Boston zone, only to have Bork get it out for the pass to Burridge. He's over the line with a feed. Rosicka's shot is deflected and out of play. Seven minutes, 11 seconds left in the first overtime period. The score is tied, 2-2. The goal by Corson tied it up at 15-56 in the third period, forcing this overtime. Montreal has only had one 100-point score over the last 11 seasons. That was Matt Snazlin, who had 110 points in 1986. They don't have one of those players to go to right now. Here we see Neely from the bad angle trying to get Patrick Waugh going. Montreal recovered nicely. But it seems, Jiggs, whenever Stefan Richet is on the ice, and he is now, when he gets a puck, it elevates the feelings of excitement here in the, in the forum. Really does. Wesley up the slot with a shot that's wide. Rozicka takes it off the goalpost. Off was well as it bounced away from Burridge. Matthew Schneider clears it around the board. The Bruins have had the better scoring chances. We just saw Corson taken down. There won't be a penalty. Ron Koharski lets the boys play. Burridge is over the line. Corson takes him to the boards. And Cote with an outlet behind Richet. It'll end up in the Boston zone. Ray Bork. Moves it up the near side. Corson held it in. It bounced away from Savard onto the stick of Ruzicka. Two Canadians drop back. Ruzicka waits, waits, resets at center ice, and flips it up in the air. It landed in front of Daniel. Controls it here with a feed to Cote. It's one of the great ones I've seen in overtime <laughs> by Ruzicka. A little unusual, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He had the puck thinking offense. A couple of his teammates were changing. Rashid's got decided to turn back and see how high he could put the puck <laughs> in the air. Is there something a little different, wonder? <laughs> He's seen it all in this series. So hard getting a rest. Matt Byrne sending out Gilchrist along with Keane and Scrudland. Mike Milbury counters with a line of Poulin, Skrico, and Neely. Neely getting a little more ice time, this time in place of Dave Christian. 
Scrublin getting a little more ice time. As he has been maybe the most complete player Montreal's had in this series. Game after game, he plays well and hard. The epitome of a character player, isn't he? You bet. Scrublin from back of the net. Uh-oh, Fabinho is there to clear the zone. Don Sweeney has it at center ice. Gary Galley right back to Sweeney. That's the Boston defense pairing. Screco nudged it to pool and stick, and he stumped it in between Desjardin and Daniel, who are on the Montreal defense. It rolled to the side of the net and scooped up and held by Patrick Waugh. Just a little play by Neely, forcing Daniel with a little shove, causing what was close to a turnover. Patrick Waugh had to hang on so the puck stays in the Montreal zone for, the, for, the, for another faceoff. Late change for the Canadians. Well, what happens here is Boston end up with a line on the ice that's had about 30 seconds of play already, so they've had some wear on themselves. Montreal counter with a, with a very fresh line, including the speedy Russ Cortinal. So Boston may be forced to a quick change on the fly, or else Poulin's line will have to make sure that that fresher Montreal line doesn't get a quality scoring chance. Most of the play over the last six or seven minutes has been between the center ice stripe and the goal line. At the Montreal end. Neely on the draw. Carboneau. And it comes back toward the blue line for Gary Galley. His shot is blocked by Guy Carboneau. Here's Cortnall. Has McPhee coming down the opposite side. Cortnall bouncing it into the zone. Galley knocks it away from McPhee. Got it to Dave Christian. Christian up the right side intended for streak only to have Carbono steal it. He's gotten it to McPhee and a shot right on. Moved the save and he's held it long enough for a face off. The goal off anyway as Galley and McPhee collided with the net. As soon as the puck was dropped, Cam Neely got to the bench. And the puck came out of the Montreal zone. And Christian stepped on to go opposite McPhee, who in this game has become an offensive force along with some fine defensive play. A quick shot through traffic. On Andy Moe. Digs any time in the offensive zone. If Neely doesn't have the puck, he's trying to position himself so he can release the shot. Much like Paul Esposito did for years and years as the Boston Bruin and New York Ranger. Get it to Neely. He'll find a way to get it behind the goaltender. LeBeau on the ice. He's had this is third shift of overtime. He's had one scoring chance. He's been an offensive threat. Montreal looks like they're going for it here. They lose the draw, and the Bruins start out of the territory. Screeko fires it in from center ice. Dufresne. Christian takes him into the boards. Dufresne on top of the puck. Back on his skates. Pool and steals it. A wrap around here. Screeko. What a stop by Juan. The rebound is batted wide. The Bruins had it put away, except for Juan. Dufresne lost it in his end of the ice. Now LeBeau with an outlet, and Corson is one on one with Fort. Wesley and Richet coming in. The ball centers is broken up by Wesley. Up to Dave Poulin. Can't reach it at center ice, and Poulin will go for the rest. Oh, what a save that was. Squeako showed patience, tried to go around Patrick Waugh, but Waugh stayed with him. Here's Stephen LeBeau. That will go out of play. A deflection by the Montreal player, putting the puck into the seats. will bring the face off outside the blue line, I believe, with four minutes and 40 seconds remaining, but Patrick Waugh is the reason they're still playing hockey in Montreal. There was a wraparound try by Dave Poulin, and Squeako can't believe it. It was a bouncing puck, but he showed patience, Jakes. Here's the wraparound. Watch Squeako move into the puck, and he won't try and bat the rolling puck there. Instead, he'll take Patrick Waugh wide, and Waugh dives. But did he ever read it well? My goodness, what a great save that was by Patrick Waugh. Just to be able to recover to go back from his right where he's going now back to his left a lunge and he took that off the kisser that went right off the front of his mask but he got there give him credit patented head shake from Patrick Waugh the play is at the other end of the ice he's still shaking that helmet and face mask of his galley moves the Bruins out through center ice on Sweeney golfed it across the Montreal line Cote failed to clear it out Rolled away from Neely. Gets it onto Janney Stick. Into the slot. Hodge, but they couldn't get it to him. Now comes back toward Don Sweeney at the left point. Sweeney, long shot. Look for the tip in. Janney takes it in the corner. 
Greg Janney centers. Here's Don Sweeney, and it goes off his stick. He'll recover to center ice, plays it away from Cortnall. Starting out is Cote. Over center with a long pass, knocked out of the air. Cortnall had to hold up at the blue line, ruling that it was knocked down with a stick over the shoulder level. More hockey action tomorrow night on Sports Channel America, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. From the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, it'll be the North Stars and the St. Louis Blues, a home ice win, and Minnesota will advance to the conference final. St. Louis trying to extend it. Mike Emery can build for Met for that action at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And some of you will see the game between the Los Angeles Kings and the Edmonton Oilers. Check your local listings. Both games beginning at 8 in the East, 4 o'clock in the West Coast, live on Sports Channel America. Jigs, we're seeing some great juggling here. Boston changing the defense and then slow changing their forwards. Montreal's not liking the fact that Milbury's not changing his units as a unit. Well, let me correct the time difference between the East Coast and the West Coast. The game started <laughs> 8 in the East, 5 o'clock on the West Coast. You know who's enjoying this game probably the most of anyone? Badger Bob, the coach of Pittsburgh. He gets to really take a look at these two teams and what the coaching philosophies are as we're well into overtime. Plus, he sees two teams try to wear themselves down as his team recovers from two tough series. And very quietly, probably cheering for the Montreal Canadiens, hoping that they'll force a seventh game and then two to go to overtime on Monday night. We'll see if the Badger gets his wish. He have played nearly 17 minutes of overtime here as Richet tries to end it. Could not as he went cross ice, and the net is up and off and play call. Andy Moog not happy with the presence of Brian Scrutland who makes a threatening gesture. Scrutland is trying to bait Wesley into a penalty. Scrutland is smart. He's baiting Wesley. He's got Wesley upset. I don't think anything will be called here. Just another draw that Boston lost and Montreal controlled and Riche, who's had most of his offense in this series from behind the goal line to the right side of Andy Moog. Carson and Burge chirping a little bit. Richet tried to wrap around again, Jigger. Here we see it. Richet behind the net will try with his long reach the wrap around. You see Wesley nicely in front. Tying up, I believe, Scootler, who's been on top of Andy Moog all throughout this series. Look at 39 White. Watch him move in. And he'll try and jam. Now he's driving Wesley into the goaltender. He's one smart player. <laughs> Not only did he push Wesley, he also got Moog. A little fake. <laughs> Pop the chest out just a tad. And try and beat Boston into a penalty. Tell you one thing, though. Good call by the men in stripes. The faceoff is outside. And it should be because Scrudlin pushed Wesley into Moog and the goalpost. The men in the stripes don't get enough credit. Being berated right now by Montreal coach Pat Burns, who disagrees with the placement of the faceoff. It also may be that the two defensemen moved in at the pushing and shoving. I'm not sure if they did, but I know for sure that the faceoff should be outside. Don Kaharski now having words with Burns as they settle their differences, or at least try to. Well, Zizka steals the puck from Desjardins, coming right in on Patrick Waugh. The forehand, he's beaten. Loose puck as Waugh got turned around, had no idea where it was, and his teammates hail him out and shoot it down the ice. Oh, my. Great offensive player in Wojcicka. Beat. Now Kortnow with the puck. Over the Boston line with a pass to Carbono In the slot, he gets checked. Canadians have it again at center. Daniel shoots it off the boards, and Moog will slow it up. Raymond Bort. The pass to Wojcicka. Broken up by Kortnow. He turns, shoots it over Wesley's head, and bounces one wide of Andy Moog. Here's Bort. Less than three minutes remaining in the first sudden death overtime. Two tired teams, but they've kept the pace fairly high here in overtime. Rosicka with a shot. Pat saved by Wong. Corson breaks the zone. Cortnall coming with him. So is Scrublin. Same Corson and Scrublin collide. Don Sweeney works the puck around to Gary Galley. Galley up the right wing boards, pushes it towards center, but Schneider is there. Matthew Schneider with a backhand. The pass now to Scrublin. Puts it in front of the golf wide of the net as Corson came up the slot. On Riche tied up with Janney. Galley is there to knock it away from Scrubland. It went to Riche. Riche can't stick handed around Neely. Scrubland centering attempt. Here's Corson closing and he scores.
Carson gets it done in overtime. Great strength shown by Corson to finally get the shot away. You see Richie go through the middle. Carson hooks and just put the puck off the goalpost. What a shot that was. It found the goalpost and some room in, room in behind Andy Moore. Riche will drive through the middle. Corson is hooked but showed strength. And Riche and the entire joint here start to jump as Shane Corson ends it. And we've got a seventh game. What an exciting one this was. Corson's eighth of the playoffs with assists to Strudlin and Riche. And it scored at 17-47 on sudden death overtime and the Montreal Canadiens have defeated the Boston Bruins by a score of 3-2. Here's how the Canadiens saw the game winner. Matt Burns, his team, Savard standing, looking on as the play developed out of the corner. Nothing to it. The Montreal Canadiens team forces the series to a seventh and deciding game in overtime. The Canadiens three, the Bruins two. We'll have a wrap up for Montreal in just a moment. Here at Montreal, it's all over in overtime. The Canadiens winning by a score of three to two and a goal by Shane Corson. The story of the game. Go back to the first period. Each team had a goal. The Bull scored on a power play. Don Sweeney tied it on a breakaway. It was 1-1 at the end of the period. It was still 1-1 at the end of two periods. And then into the third, early in the third period, Boston took the lead. Murray set up Lazaro for a goal at the 126 mark. Corson would tie it at 15-56. Riche and Strudland assisting on Corson's eighth goal. And then his ninth. In the playoffs comes at 17:47 of overtime. Same two guys setting him up, Strudlin and Riche, and that big line for Montreal gets it done when they needed it most. In overtime, the shots on goal for the Bruins 12, for the Canadians 9, 41 to 34. The total shots favor of Montreal, and for the first time since 1979, there will be a seventh game between the Bruins and the Canadians in the playoffs. Here's the reason why we'll go back to Boston for the game on Monday night, J.D. And the Bruins nearly had the puck as Neely chipped it away. And a break as the puck flipped back to Corson. But it was no break or no fluke when he showed his strength to get the shot through traffic. Off the goal post. Jakes, you got a coin and some dice? We got to roll something here because that's how close it's been in this series. Who knows for game seven? When I think back to that overtime, I think of the great scoring chances that the Boston Bruins had outstanding goaltending by Patrick Waugh. We may have been a little critical of Patrick in the first four or five games of this series. You can't criticize him tonight. Go back towards the end of the game. It was 2-2 and he robbed Gary Galley with a great catching glove save. He made a number of saves here in overtime, including a breakaway on Ruzicka. Ruzicka, a Czechoslovakian, and you know when you look around the league at those Czechoslovakian players, they're finesse players. Think of Semenov with Edmonton right now in the playoffs, a Soviet player. When they get around the goal net, they love to go to their backhands. Usually they're very good. Patrick Waugh was better. Well, Montreal. <laughs> we said at the outset, they always come through, it seems, when the game, the series is on the line. There's so much history here at the Forum, and wouldn't you know, in overtime, they win it by a score of 3-2. to two. So we'll go to Boston for a game on Monday. One game showdown on Monday. Before that, tomorrow night, we'll have more Stanley Cup action for you on Sports Channel. The Minnesota North Stars and the St. Louis Blues, that game will face the Pittsburgh Penguins in the conference finale. The Canadians and the Bruins, there's your starting time, 7.30 Monday night, said the Montreal Canadiens bench. And with that reaction, we know we go back to Boston. See you on Monday night. The Canadians win it 3-2. For John Davidson, I'm Jake McDonald saying so long from Montreal. <laughs>